I want to thank uh, all of the Afghanistanian troops. We have a lot of them here, actually. We have a number of them standing around, saying hello and waving, and we appreciate it. And I also say to you, just at ease, let's just enjoy ourselves for a couple of minutes. I'm going to introduce a few people. But there's nowhere I'd rather celebrate this Thanksgiving than right here with the toughest, strongest, best and bravest warriors on the face of the earth. You are indeed that. You know, uh, when I took office, if you can believe it, almost three years ago, we were uh, very depleted. Our military was depleted in terms of equipment, you see, right? They're all shaking their heads, that's right. We have all those brand new planes and brand new helicopters and brand new ships being built now, brand new incredible submarines. Probably the most powerful submarines, probably the most powerful weapon in the world is what we're building. The form of submarines, nobody's, nothing's even close. But we have things that nobody's seen, nobody's heard about, and we'll keep it that way. But we've spent two and a half trillion dollars, very close to that number, and uh, very shortly it'll be at two and a half trillion dollars. And while I don't love that, you know, what that does to my budget, because I'm a budget person, uh, we don't have a strong military. Budgets don't matter much, do they? Huh? I kind of have to worry about budgets. So with what's going on in the world today, very important. Two and a half trillion dollars. And nobody uh, beats our great Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, Marines. And we think soon we're going to be adding a thing called space. You know about that, right? Space. We're going to have space covered very well. We're covering it now, but we have to cover it to a much greater extent. And you'll be hearing about that in the coming days and weeks. I've just come from serving Thanksgiving dinner to some of you. I recognize already some of you in the audience and with General Milley and the folks. And we had a good time. I then got down. I sat down. I had a gorgeous piece of turkey. And I was all set to go, and I had some of the mashed potatoes, and I had a bite of mashed potatoes. And I never got to the turkey because General Milley said, come on over, sir, let's take some pictures. I never got to my turkey. It's the first time in Thanksgiving that I've never had anything <laughs> called turkey. But that's okay. But it looked awfully good, I have to tell you that. I should have started with that instead of the mashed potatoes. I made a mistake. But I hope everyone enjoyed the fantastic meal. It certainly did look good, and hopefully everyone can get some well-deserved rest this holiday. Your family, they're home, and they love you so much. We flew 8,331 miles to be here tonight for one simple reason, to tell you in person that this Thanksgiving is a special Thanksgiving. We're doing so well. Our country is the strongest economically it's ever been. We have never done so well. We have the greatest economy anywhere in the world. So it's nice to know that you're fighting for something that is doing well, as opposed to something that was not doing well just a number of years ago. Our stock markets reached the highest level ever in the history of the exchanges, all three. If you look, all three. Uh, it's incredible. It's incredible what's happening. It just broke a record. I think it's close to 130 days, so we're less than three years. And 130 times we've broken the all-time record. And to me, that doesn't mean an all-time record. It means something different. It means jobs. It means 401ks. People come up to me with their 401ks. They say, sir, you've made me look like a genius. Thank you very much. You know, they're up 78 percent. They feel good. So I would just want to say that we thank God for your health and all of the things that you've done. You are very special people, and you don't even know how much the people of our country love and respect you. And they do. That's why I'm here. I'm just bringing the message. The courageous American warriors in Afghanistan and across the region are leading the fight to vanquish America's enemies and defeat forces of radical Islamic Terrorism. I would say it so often during the campaign. That's what we're doing. Together, we're making tremendous progress. Just a few weeks ago, as you know, and as President Ghani mentioned, U.S. Special Forces brought the world's number one most wanted terrorist to justice. When the President said more important than Osama bin Laden, I would say that, look, you know, different in a way. He was an organizer. 
al-Baghdadi was an organizer. He was the founder of ISIS. He was the father, if you want to call him that, of ISIS. I think he wasn't so happy three weeks ago when he saw those incredible 67 men, in that case, just come pouring down onto where he was staying. And that didn't work out too good. And we have a new national hero. You know who that is, right? Conan. Conan is a new — is our new great hero. At Wisconsin. And Conan was at the White House the other day. You might have seen it. And uh, it was something. But the animal known as ba al-Baghdadi, the founder, the leader of ISIS, the man that was trying to reinstitute ISIS because we've defeated — we have 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate in Syria is now ours. He is dead. His second is dead. His third, we have the sights on the third. I think the third doesn't want the job. The third is saying, you know what? Uh, maybe I'll go work at a store or something. But Baghdadi was a, a savage and soulless monster who raped, tortured, and slaughtered the innocent, including many, many Americans. When you saw those folks, those great people, in the orange jumpsuits, oftentimes standing on a beach with a thug behind him and a big knife. That was all al-Baghdadi, but he's gone. The American warriors hunted him down. They executed a masterful raid, and they punched his ticket to hell. That's what happened. Shortly after we got Baghdadi, we uh, focused on some other elements in the area. And we also started leaving the area because it's secure, but we didn't leave it totally. We kept the oil. Makes sense, right? I've been saying for a long time, keep the oil. Hate to say it. I used to say it with a place called Iraq, too. Keep the oil. They didn't listen to me. I was a civilian. They didn't listen. Now they have to listen. But we kept the oil. And we kept it, and we can help the Kurds, we can help our partners, we can have it developed. It's where they got their wealth, that's where they got their money. We kept it. And so uh, we'll go back in when we have to as it arises, but 100 percent. We have thousands of prisoners. We'd like Europe to take those prisoners. They have not stepped up to the plate at all. Many come from France, many come from Germany, they come from different countries in Europe. They have not stepped up to the plate. That's not good. We have to talk to them, John, because they should be taking those people back and trying them. And if we didn't do it, they'd go back to France and they'd go back to Germany and to UK and to all of all of the places where they came. That's where they want to go back. And they should take them. Weeks ago, we also announced that the um, forces are Coming back, they're coming back home. We're reducing over here, but because of technology and all of the things that we have, we're able to reduce in Afghanistan, very substantially actually reduce, and do even more devastating attacks on the enemy. So that's part of the two and a half trillion that we have coming. Finest equipment in the world. We build the greatest equipment anywhere in the world by far. And we're selling that equipment now to many, many countries that are our allies. The enemies, we decide usually not to do it. History has said, don't sell the good equipment to the enemy. Our message to the bloodthirsty terrorists is clear. You will not escape your wretched fate because the long reach and the really awesome power of the United States military is unstoppable. We have the most powerful military in the world by far. There's nobody close. And we're going to keep it that way. We're going to keep it that way. 